me recently, how do you pray? Which is a big question and I am not an expert. I really just talk to God wherever I am, whatever I'm doing. I might be talking to you and talking to God. If you're sharing something with me that needs a response and I need wisdom to know what to say. I have prayer requests that I lift up. The Lord puts people on my heart to pray for. And the moment they're on my heart, I try to pray because I will forget. But the thing I want to share with respect to prayer is praying scripture because I have seen such power in that. The beauty in praying scripture is you're praying the words of God back to him. 1 John 5, 14 and 15 says, and this is the confidence that we have before him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us in whatever we ask, we know that we have the requests which we have asked of him. Praying scripture puts us in a position of asking according to his will and having the confidence that he hears us and that he will answer those requests. Which brings me to the other beautiful thing about praying scripture. It takes me beyond asking for what I think I want. If it were up to me, I would ask for every hard place, every trial to be taken away. But it's the hard things that have moved me to press in, know God better, and trust him more. Praying scripture puts you on God's territory and you just have to get ready because he will go to work. And it often begins right here, getting our own hearts right so he can use us for his glory. Praying scripture is simple. You may be reading the Bible and a verse grabs you and you know the Lord is saying, this is for you. This is where you need to be or this is what you need to do. The temptation is to feel overwhelmed or even condemned because you know you're not there and you feel like you'll never get there. Simply pray the verse. If the Holy Spirit stopped you at that verse and let you know it's what you need, it's because you're ready to receive it and it's the Lord who's going to do the work. Remember, he who began a good work in you will perfect it until the day of Christ Jesus. Praying the verse is part of submitting yourself to the Lord's will and letting him do that work in you. I remember when 2 Timothy 2, 24 through 26 first jumped out at me. The Lord's bondservant must not be quarrelsome, but be kind to all, able to teach, patient when wronged, with gentleness correcting those who are in opposition, if perhaps God may grant them repentance, leading to the knowledge of the truth, and they come to their senses and escape from the snare of the devil, having been held captive by him to do his will. And then I read the key parts again. Must not be quarrelsome, kind to all, able to teach, patient when wronged, with gentleness correcting those who are in opposition. I said, okay, well, um, by nature and by training as a litigator, I am actually rather quarrelsome, definitely impatient, especially when wronged, gentle, and I saw that in being that way, I could hinder the gospel. I could actually be in the way of someone learning the truth because of my nature. So I said, Lord, help me to not be quarrelsome, to be kind to all, able to teach, patient when wronged, with gentleness correcting those who are in opposition. And I prayed those verses a long time. And now sometimes I'll be in a conversation and I'll realize a few years back where my flesh might have gone, but I'll feel just as calm and we're dialoguing and I'm seeing the fruit 
in the conversation because of what the Lord has done in my heart. So there's that being stopped at a verse and praying that verse. And there are also scripture verses that are themselves prayers, which I have prayed for years for myself as well as others. Ephesians 1, starting at verse 17. And I pray it like this. Lord, I pray that you would give me a spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of you. I pray that the eyes of my heart may be enlightened so that I will know what is the hope of your calling, what are the riches of the glory of your inheritance in the saints, and what is the surpassing greatness of your power toward us who believe. That prayer, powerful. Pray it. Pray it continually. Ephesians 3, starting at verse 16. Lord, I pray that you would grant me, according to the riches of your glory, to be strengthened with power through your spirit in the inner man, so that Christ may dwell in my heart through faith, and that I, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ, which surpasses knowledge, that I may be filled up to all the fullness of God. When you pray like that, get ready. Just get ready. When you pray to be filled with all the fullness of God, that means none of you. That means dying to self, which we are called to do anyway. And it can be painful getting to that place. But oh, that place of being filled to all the fullness of God. There is no better place. And to know, really know the love of Jesus and to be rooted and grounded in that love. Pray the prayer. Pray it continually. And don't just pray the verses. Pay attention to how God is moving after you pray the verses. Because he will answer. He will answer. That's the promise of 1 John 5. Another favorite prayer I pray, especially when I need to make a decision about something, is from Colossians 1, starting at verse 9. Lord, I pray to be filled with the knowledge of your will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding so that I will walk in a manner worthy of you, Lord, to please you in all respects, bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of you, strengthened with all power according to your glorious might for the attaining of all steadfastness and patience, joyously giving thanks to you, Father. Oh, and wait, I love this one too from Philippians. Lord, I pray that my love may abound more and more in real knowledge and all discernment so that I may approve the things that are excellent in order to be sincere and blameless until the day of Christ. So pray scripture when the Holy Spirit stops you at a verse. Pray actual prayers from scripture that will take you deeper in your relationship with God and your understanding of his will. And also have your go-to verses that you pray in certain seasons or situations. As I said before, like when you need to make a decision about something, worry. Lord, help me to be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving to make my request known unto you. And I thank you that your peace will guard my heart and mind in Christ Jesus. Direction. Make me know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. An unsettled soul. Lord, I thank you that you are my shepherd. 
I pray you make me to lie down in green pastures. Lead me beside quiet waters. Restore my soul. Guide me in the paths of righteousness for your name's sake. Sin. Lord, I praise you that I have been freed from the power of sin and can consider myself dead to sin and alive in Christ Jesus. Help me, Lord, to not let sin reign in my mortal body that I should obey its lusts, to not go on presenting the members of my body to sin as instruments of unrighteousness, but to present myself to you as someone alive from the dead and my members as instruments of righteousness to you. Warfare. Lord, help me to be strong in you and in the strength of your might. Help me to put on your full armor so that I can stand firm against the schemes of the devil. The list goes on and on. We all have our own issues of the heart and mind. Prayer takes us before the throne where we can receive mercy and grace to help in time of need. Prayer builds fellowship and intimacy with God and praying scripture renews our minds to the truth while also calling on God to establish truth in our hearts and minds and in the hearts and minds of those we're praying for. This is a deep, wide, priceless, powerful, living and active everlasting treasure.